Gracious God, our Father, we come now to say thank you. Father, I thank you now for another preaching opportunity. I ask that you'll hide it behind thy sacred cross and cover me with your precious blood. I ask that you cover me so they won't see me but see you. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my God, my strength, and my redeemer. your Bibles, turn with me to the book of James. The book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We'll commence with verse 2. James chapter 1. We'll commence with verse 2. And if you're using your same advice, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, NLT. James, first chapter, verse 2. I ask that you stand for the reading and reverence of God's holy and divine word. All right, James. It reads on this wise. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. When your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I the talk from these words of preaching is worth it. It's worth it. Jalen Hurts is without a doubt one of the best examples of one who has overcome a range of obstacles. Because we all know that he began his collegiate career at the University of Alabama until he was replaced in 2018 in the national title game by quarterback to attack of a lower. And as a result, he was demoted to backup quarterback the next season. But then, after three years with the Crimson Tide, Jalen Hurts made a smooth transition to the University of Oklahoma. And during his time there, he became one of the four players since the year 2000 to have 50 or more touchdowns in a single season. And as a Heisman finalist, he was invited to New York and finished as the awards run up. But even though Jalen Hurts had accomplished a lot, his NFL career was in jeopardy. Because Hurts received criticism because he did not have the league's strongest arm. And scouts had tended to make Jalen Hurts be considered as a one-read quarterback. And also he received criticism because they thought he did not play from the pocket enough. But as it turned out, the Philadelphia Eagles selected him with the 53rd overall pick in the second round of the 2020 NFL Draft. Now let's fast forward to two and a half years later. Jalen Hurts went from being unsuited for the NFL to leading the Eagles to Super Bowl 57. But despite the fact that Super Bowl 57 did not go exactly as he had planned, he said something at the end of his post-game press conference that moved me deep. He said, you know, we had a big time goal in mind in the end that we wanted to accomplish, but we came up short. But you know, I think the beautiful part about it is everybody experienced different pains. All right, now. Everybody experienced different agonies, but you decide if you want to learn from it. You decide if you want to use that to be a teachable moment 
in your life. My brothers and my sisters, you may not even watch football, but you ought to let what he said sizzle in your heart. Because without a doubt, like Jalen Hurts, we have it all this game called life. Right. And in these moments, we get so focused on what we're going through and we spend so much time wondering why we're going through but what we're going through. However, that's not the way right. it should be. Because whenever you find yourself dealing with a situation you can't handle, you ought to look in the mirror. All right. Reflect on your life and consider what you can learn from it and the positive outcomes that can come Amen. from your situation. Right. Because I've learned we become so overly bitter when we're faced with trials. But instead of being so bitter, you ought to allow what you go through to make you better. All right, man. This is the picture. All right. That the text face for us today. Because we are currently reflecting on some trying times. James, the brother of Jesus, is writing to the Jewish people. And he's writing to them because following Christ's resurrection and the early success of the early church in Jerusalem, the followers of Christ experienced great persecution. They had no choice but to flee to all locations. But they were encouraged, however, that what they were going through was worth it because even in trying times, God's work in us is necessary for our development. But if you want to understand how it can be worth it, number one, you must experience persecution. You must experience persecution. James Walls an honest man. He didn't argue against the fact that sometimes life can get hard. And in light of this, he warns the Jewish people that they can expect to encounter some temptations that they just cannot avoid. But we have to highlight the fact that even though he used the word temptation, it's not used in the sense as we know it to describe a desire to do something. But it means to try, to test, and to prove when translated to the Greek and simply said, James was saying, you're going to face some trials oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that you have to deal with. Oh, yeah. And I find this to be true. Yes, Lord. Because in this life, yeah. we're bound to face some kinds of trouble. Oh, yeah. 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 Because last time I checked the rest of God, out. God never said everything would go your way. God never said that the road would be easy without any bumps because just like the sun shines, yeah, some rain has got to got to fall. But yes, we can be assured that we'll face trouble. But even though we know we are facing it, it comes with a catch. Because you don't know what to expect in this life. You don't know what type of trials and tribulations you'll go through in this church. Because sometimes we find ourselves in situations that seem unfair, make no sense, and we end up feeling like we don't deserve what we're going you mean to tell me you go to work every day get paid and still struggle to pay your bills you can think you're in the best relationship you ever had you can think your boo your baby and all whatever you call them is probably all of that in the bag of chips but then they'll leave you hot and dry kids can study for text Stay up all night, burn the midnight hour, but when that test is graded, and you see an elf on your paper. You take good care of your health. You do what the doctors tell you to do. You cut back on what the doctors tell you to cut back from, but now the doctor said, I don't I see something. 
that I just don't like. And then when the doctor tells you he sees something you don't like, you do what the doctor tells you to do and get treated. But when you get treatment, things don't get any better, but you find out things only get worse. And in these moments, we feel like we don't deserve In these moments, right now. we don't know what to do. Right. We don't know what to turn. <coughs> but let me ask you, what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when life gets the best of you? What do you do when life snatches the life out of you? What do you do when life overwhelms you? And here in this text, James says, be joyful. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I spoke about we face what we don't deserve. These folks have been following Jesus as a result. They've been persecuted. And they have to leave what was familiar, adjust to a new environment. All right. Because they're trying to spare their life. All right, now. Now, James, I'm going through all of this, man. I'm experiencing right, persecution. Amen. And you tell me to have joy. All right, now. Yeah. Man, ain't no way you can be the brother of Jesus giving advice like that. How on earth? All right, now. Right, now. Can I have joy? I know y'all tired of me hollering, but I'm going to hollering. Go ahead. Go ahead. But you, you won't understand. All right, now. What James had meant. If you don't fully comprehend what joy is. Because he was not saying you got to walk around with a smile on your face. All right, all right, all right. He wasn't saying you have to fake it until you make it. Put on your happy face and act like everything is okay. No, that's not what joy is. Because there is a difference between happiness and joy. All right now. Happiness is external. But joy is internal. All right now. Happiness is inconsistent. But joy is consistent. All right. The old preacher would say happiness is based off of what's happening. All right. But joy is an attitude that withstands what's happening. But I learned that the reason why we can't have joy is because we don't look at the problem from God's perspective. Because whenever we're faced with a problem, we allow the situation to cloud our vision of who God is and what God is doing. But you've got to understand that what you experience is necessary for God to accomplish his perfect plan of development in your life. All right, now. Because I learned that God has to put you in places you don't want to be in order to get you to where you need to be. Because life is a process of becoming, and becoming won't happen overnight. All of us got to go through something. Amen. James. Amen. He's not saying have joy because of the pain in and of the sin. But he said you ought to have joy because of the benefits and the purpose of your pain. Yeah. I believe Frankie Beverly Mays put it like this. Where there's a flower, there's the sun and the rain. All right. Oh, but it's wonderful. Right. They're both one. In the same. All right, all right, all right. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Joy yeah. and pain. Yeah. It's like and rain. So you got to have joy. All right, man. You must all right. experience persecution. All right now. But then, if you want it to be worth it, you must exercise. Perseverance. All right. All right. Got to exercise. Perseverance. All 
All right, now. We will all face trying circumstances just like the scattered gene. This is because we're enrolled in this school called life. All right, now. All right, now. Come on, come on. God is the teacher. All right, now. All right. We are the students. All right. And trouble is our test. All right, now. Tell it. And ever did it. James knew that this was all the people were experiencing because it was nothing but a test. Right but we have to highlight the fact and make mention that James knew that these people believed in God. Right so now. therefore, he didn't have to ask them to have faith in God. Instead, he's calling the people to remain faithful all right. until the end. All right now. Because James saw that these people had faith, but their faith was weak, and their faith needed to be strengthened. All right, now. My brothers and my sisters, this is exactly why we have to go through tests in life. All right, now. Because they're not designed to display whether or not we have faith. But they come to strengthen our faith. Yeah, all right, all right. But I've learned all right. that some of us are stuck where we are and we can't see our faith strengthened simply because we don't like tears. All right. We're not prepared for the test. We feel like we're too weak for the test and we crack under that kind of pressure. But can I tell you, regardless of how you feel, all right, man. you don't have to go Alright now. My brothers and sisters, I know a lot of folk. Some folk been in church in years. Come on, right. You can't see the church doors open without them. They've been Christians a long time, but their faith is still on the same level. All right now. And whenever your faith is still on the same level, that's when God has to step in and put you through something to add more. To the tables. All right now. Let me make a plan. Real talk. If I take this robe off, take this cufflink shirt off, you realize I don't know too much about lifting weights. All right now. But one thing I know. Yeah. All right now. Is that if you lift the same amount of weight from week to week, yeah. your body will adapt to that particular weight you've been lifting. All right. All right. And you will no longer gain the necessary strength you need in your muscle. All right. So therefore, when you get used to that, okay. when your strength that you already have can handle that, you have to add more weight All right, now. to the weight yeah. you've already been lifting. Amen. But one thing about it, when you add that new weight, yeah, it's a little rough. But you got to keep pushing. All right, now. And my brothers and my sisters, I realize that God has to do us this because our faith is on the same level because there are some things in life we get used to but God has to add more right. weight on you. Right. And when God adds more weight on you, it may get rough, it may get tough, but you got to keep on. Keep on pushing. Keep on pushing even though it hurts. Keep on pushing even though you want to give up. Keep on pushing when you think you can't make it. Keep on pushing. Everybody else is still waiting for you to drop out and fail. Because when God puts you to the test, when God adds more weight on you, it may seem like God is beating you down, but all God is trying to do here is strengthen you. And a lot of you in New City been knowing you all my life. And I know the only reason you're still here today is because you kept pushing. Because the truth be told, what you went through could have taken you out, but God gave you the strength to keep on. Keep on pushing. Curtis Mayfield, y'all know I like old school music. Yeah, yeah. Like. yeah. Mayfield released an album called Superfly in the Seven. Yes, he did. 
But let me tell you, before he was talking about being your pusher man, he was with a group called the Impressions. They said, I got to keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. Move up a little higher some way, somehow. Because I got my strength. And it don't make no sense not to keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. It's worth it. Tell it is worth it. You want it to be worth it? You must experience persecution. You must exercise perseverance. But then, if you want it to be worth it, you must embrace perfection. God desires that all of us persevere. But even though we can persevere. Yeah. We have to be patient in our endurance. Amen. Because if we are perfect, yeah. the Bible says we'll reach perfection. All right. This does not mean that we'll become perfect people. Because there's not one person that's perfect itself. God himself. Amen. However, it means complete development mm -hmm. and complete maturity. Yeah. But I realize that we don't know how long we'll have to endure. Right. Because endurance doesn't guarantee All right. that you'll get the results when you want them. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. But can I tell you, we can't expect microwave results All right, man. when we serve a crock pot God. Right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Because too often we try to rush the process. But can I tell you that all you do is make everything worse? Right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Because whenever you try to get out of the situation prematurely, you miss out on the benefits that God has for your life. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. But whenever you try to get out of the situation, yeah. God will have to work on you all over again. Right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. I got to go on now. But I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have made cornbread. And whenever you make cornbread, you have to mix up your batter. And once your batter is mixed, you put your batter down in a baking pan and you put the cornbread in the oven. Have I got a witness? But there's something I learned about cornbread. Because cornbread can look good on the outside, but it don't look good on the inside. Have I got a witness? And several times I watch my mama make cornbread. And when my mama gets through making the cornbread, she'll reach in the cabinet to grab a toothpick and stick that toothpick in the center of the cornbread. Have I got a witness? And if the toothpick comes out dirty, the cornbread is not done. But if the toothpick is clean, the cornbread is done. Where do you say them? God has all of us in the oven. And who puts the toothpick in us to see if we're done? But can I tell you? Some of y'all came out dirty, so God had to put you back in the oven. And is there anybody here that's glad to know that God had to put you in the oven? Oh, 
Jesus had to go through the earth. And I got a witness because the Bible says that Jesus prayed three times. It said, Father, remove this cup from me. But then Jesus came to his senses and said, nevertheless, not my will, but let thy will be God. Jesus stayed in the earth. And because he stayed in the oven, he was marched up a score shaped here. They nailed Jesus in his hand. They nailed Jesus in his feet. They put Jesus in his side with a crown of thorns on his head. He died. Is everybody here that know he died?